This is the Okagani River, Dawson to Hazel Bakers, Cape Faisal. Look at all the rain coming off the ridge. Oh my goodness. I think it's July 30th, 2016. One of the more interesting kayak trips I've done this year. Almost didn't know what trees and stuff. is going down your off river. About 40 miles south of downtown. <laughs> that is a Western Pennsylvania accent. <laughs> it's more like a south of Pittsburgh accent because most people in North Pittsburgh don't sound like that.
Oh, I see. Interesting. Yeah, if you watch, uh, my mom likes to watch those shows, The Doctors or whatever. That guy, I don't know if he's from Chicago or something, but he has the most annoying Midwest accent ever. I mean, he just says everything that way. He's a younger guy, a younger doctor, the guy that heads that show up, The Doctors. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, he sounds like really Midwestern to me. That's funny. <laughs> Yeah. You had the Hispanic population, and then you had the Pueblo population. So one time I was talking to a young guy, and I said, you said, how did you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Mingo. <laughs> <laughs> go to New Mexico if I had, had a job at this point but I don't think that's gonna happen soon enough although I mean I am in consideration for a good job with the state but even if I get that it'll be a month or more before I get it I'm still looking I I am um, I have I'm on my second unemployment claim second consecutive unemployment claim I didn't even know that was possible but apparently there's enough money left in the coffer it, that after that I won't be able to collect for two years since December 18th of 2015. Huh? Are you having a good time doing it? I'm, I'm, I'm ready to be doing something else. I've come up with projects for myself to keep myself busy like I taught myself. It's, it's okay when you have, have money, but after you run out of money, yeah. it sucks. So like, I ran out of money for a few weeks between the claims because I used up my claim. You get unemployment compensation. Mm -hmm. That's right, so you do have some traveling money. Yeah, I mean, a minimal amount. It's it's all like I'm I'm living. It's which is basically what I was making. That's the thing is every job I had is basically paid the same as unemployment. But the ones that I'm that I'm hoping to get a geologist thing in New Stanton would be ideal because that would actually pay more than unemployment. Yeah, I used up all my retirement. That's what I heard, yeah. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. The orange ones that are all folded up like, uh, they're, they're folded backwards on themselves? <coughs> nice. Hmm. You're right. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. They're different than the ones on the Laurel Highlands Trail. And look at the yellow ones. Whoa. So, the entire month of June, if you went on the Laurel Highlands hiking trail, mountain laurels were everywhere. I'd never seen anything like it. I like I like kayaking more, but kayak trips that are worth doing are hard to come by. Like I don't want to bother with my boat and just go paddle around Lake Arthur and stuff. Um, but I have a few uh, ideas up my sleeve for my the ones that I usually do. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get them going next month. I like to do the full moon Kiskaminitas River paddle and the uh, Allegheny Mahoning paddle. That's uh, different than Kate's because we paddle up river and then we. Uh, it's like more relaxed, like you know. I love the Kiski. It's fast too. You go 17 miles in like three and a half hours, and you don't have to paddle. And at night with the moonlight, it's just amazing, huh? There's always enough water in the Kiski as long as you start at Apollo. I mean, don't start up at uh, Salzburg or whatever. You'll be paddling all night. But uh, what I usually do that is I'll start, you know, the paddle at like 7, 7:30 or whatever, you know, an hour before it gets dark. And then you're there at sunset. You're there when the moon comes up. You, last year I did it in Apollo, and it was like 17 miles. And we put in like 7:30 at night, finished about midnight in Freeport. No, on that trip we go downstream and we take out at the Allegheny River in Freeport. Um, but the other, huh? <coughs> That's beautiful. <coughs> you go past uh, the steel mill, um, the the Baghdad uh, Allegheny Ludlam plant at night. Um, 
little towns and stuff. It's just neat. Is that what they do there? I did the bridge at Leechburg back in 1983, I think. Yeah. Were you with the state? Yeah, I was project engineer. Okay, you probably know the other guy I know who is an engineer, Steve Smith. He built the Laurel Highlands Hiking Trail Bridge. Maybe he might be a newer guy. Okay. And, uh, no, I, I was away during that time. I wanted to yeah. retire from PennDOT. I left early in 90s. Oh, I've totally used it for stuff like that. So I go on That's there. How you do it. I go on there and I learn how to do other things with this camera, like advanced things like doing time lapse videos and how to do different video editing and how to. <laughs> yeah. I go through stages uh, of what I, I do. I find something and then I go. Oh, oh totally. I was like, I was in a Facebook stage where I like posted all my pictures from Facebook and then I discovered YouTube and I like don't bother with Facebook anymore. I'm just putting stuff on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I, my role was that I used to post post six months behind with a six month delay on Facebook and then I got to where I was completely caught up and now I'm just letting that six month delay build up because I'm like, well, they, they don't really know where I'm at. They know where I was at six months ago. <laughs> totally, yeah. If you burn once yet, if I mean there's a limit, but I'll, I'll give for sure. I just am so glad to be on the water. Yeah, I was almost ready to turn around and not come, which. It was totally unlike me, but I mean, it looked like the most horrible day ever, and then it turned out okay. Yeah. Is it a cold front or a warm front that came through? I don't know which came through, but I know that's the collision. I think it's warmer now. That's what I think. It seems like it's more humid. Yesterday was okay. Yesterday was cooler. But when you get those big storms, they come to pass over and then they're gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a hurricane remnant or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't. I mean, my mom's like, you're crazy. I'm like, well, I won't be on the water for three hours. It'll be totally different then, and it's not here. It's like, she doesn't do anything, though. Oh, that went good. Uh, luckily, it didn't have too many people because the rain scared some away, so I had 17 people. Um, even then, it was like too many because half of the group was like, we're going to go over there. And so we didn't really know where half of the group was. Um, but they all, we all met up at the end. It worked out great. Um, I was more afraid of how late that was going to be. Huh? What time did you get home? Well, oh, I guess I got home before midnight. I mean, because really? we... You figure when an hour after the fireworks are over, I mean, if 40 minutes after they're over, we're back. Back where? 
back at the where we put in. And then all the traffic's gone <coughs> by then. There's no traffic. Yeah, it's okay. gone. And, and plus, that's not that's not like right in the city. It's a, it's out of the city. So even if there was traffic, it wouldn't be there. <coughs> Day of work since December 18th, 2015. They, you haven't had what? I haven't worked a day since December of last year. I've been trying to get work. I mean, now it's to the point where you know I just I need something good. I mean, I didn't. I was my unemployment ran out for about three weeks, but then I was able to do another claim. So I had this, you know, something. There was like a job where I could have made ten dollars an hour doing some general labor or something, but. I called unemployment and they said, well, if you take that, then you'll lose, you know, your whatever. I would actually be losing money to be doing work that's not what I want to be doing anyway. So I'm just looking for something good. I've had like 10 interviews all, you know, with the state for different things. Oh, well, it'll come. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I went through that period one time. Yeah. As long as, I mean, it's not like December, I mean, because, yeah, my claim started in, like, July 1st or whatever, so as long as I don't get to December and I'm still out of luck, I'll be okay. I applied even at REI and just, you know, some places like that. I mean, I'm always adding a few little places just in case. Right. <coughs> you know, they, they paid... Well, no, they called me and they interviewed me, but apparently I'm not... Well, if I, I'm not good enough for REI to run a register. I mean, I don't get it. They told, like, I went in there and I'm like, you know, it's like, I gotta be the most outdoorsy person they've ever had come in here to interview. Right. And I told them, you know, everything was all connected. I gave this perfect interview. And then they're like, they told, called me like a few weeks later. They're like, we really like what you're doing. We really, we really think you're great. Unfortunately, we selected someone else. I thought, well, they're gonna call me in and give me a management position. No, they're like, we wanna interview you in a group interview in a few months. and. I don't quite get it. I'm like, well, if you like me so much, why don't you hire me now and then figure out what you're going to do in two months? I, I don't know what's going on. But, I mean, I, I was kind of thinking, oh, they're going to give me something even better. Maybe, they, maybe, maybe they're working up for you. Maybe maybe, yeah, I mean, maybe they have, to, they have to clear it out or something. Yeah, because, I mean, I know I'm qualified to do a lot more than, you know, the particular positions that I applied for, but it's... I'm sure you can, I'm sure you can get the hang of the faster. Hmm? Oh, I'm totally sure, yeah. They're, uh, <laughs> it's just kind of funny. <laughs> is, that, is that down on the south side? No, um, so I applied at the Robinson one. Oh, Robinson? Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with applying at the south side, too. I just wanted to start with Robinson first, because you got to pay for parking. Um, well, I guess you can get by at south side. So there's that trail that goes along the river. If you park down the trail by like 21st Street, you can you can get the REI in like a five minute walk. So I, if I work there, that's what I'd do. The yeah, the bike trail is not far. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna when it comes up. I mean, they don't care, it's, it's all whatever. I mean, but I'm mostly, I'm trying to concentrate on like the positions I really want are government type positions um, you know I had recruiters call and try to offer me the kind of positions <coughs> I was doing before with engineering companies but I uh, well, some recruiters to give me you know the, but they're the same kind of positions I, I left before I went with the state last year and I actually I can't do them anymore I mean testing the soils and the density and carrying that 50 pound thing around I mean it pulled my shoulder out of whack I've been going to chiropractor three times a week for three months um, it's it just keeps flaring up so I want to do something that's not gonna make it bad for me and I mean they, they can get anyone to do that kind of work I mean I did that kind of work when I was a second year you know undergraduate college student <coughs> <coughs> <coughs>
<laughs> I destroyed one of these things on the last kayak trip I was on on the yacht. I had to buy another one. That's a, yeah, it makes movies. It's a GoPro movie camera. So, but it takes pictures too. But lately, I've been having fun, more fun making movies. Yeah, I like how you have a mountain there. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. I did this thing called the Canyon Man Ultra in the spring and I didn't know how to edit videos at the time. I just bought the camera like because I'm like, oh I'm doing this hundred mile thing. I gotta have a camera. And I got a porcupine like on a video that was the size of a bear, I swear. Oh, wow. And I told the people and they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll see when we see the video. And so I got the video and it was all dark. And then I just discovered that if you go on YouTube editor, you can like add some light and stuff. <laughs> and I did it, and I'm like, look, there it is. So I put it up again, and I'm like, there's the there's the porcupine find that was as big as a bear. <laughs> but those, uh, if you get north of like I-80, the porcupines are everywhere. Like they come out at night, and they're just like the weirdest things. You'll see something slow going across the trail, and like you could like catch them and stuff. I mean, that's why they got the spikes. They're just that slow. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, you your car, so like your hoses. Oh my gosh, they Whoa. They They damage all the trees too. They eat all the bark. Um, and apparently they fall out of trees and they, they get their own quills in them. Like that happens a lot, I guess. They're they're clumsy and, and not very good. <laughs> So the fisher's the only thing that'll eat a porcupine. It attacks the face. That, it, it like knows that because that's the only soft part, and it eats it through its face. Yeah, it's it's like really like horrible, like the way that it has to get the porcupine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you think about it. Ugh. But the um, gosh. So like on the Allegheny uh, State Park cross country ski trip I did this year in New York, there wasn't any snow, so I like, well, let's do hikes on the North Country Trail. So we hiked on the North Country Trail and saw porcupine tracks and followed them for two miles. Like the same porcupine, and he'd like pull off. It was like he was visiting all his friends, and I mean they they use the trails just like people. It was really crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like even yesterday at North Park, I'll go to North Park on this one trail and there's always deer on this trail and like you'll start walking and they'll just be like running ahead on the trail like they don't step off for quite a while. Yeah. They're not afraid of people at all. Like you can get within a few feet of the babies, especially because they know not to be afraid. Um, the only time the babies will go away is if a mother or something comes by and makes a snort. Like you'll hear them go, <coughs> and then they all kind of run. Yeah. But now there's this button buck up there, and I'm seeing him all the time, and he's just like, you know, like a first year buck, and he's like, I'm getting like within 10 feet of him, it seems like.
I um, see, oh, in West Virginia, I had a baby deer follow me, and uh, it was making noise, and it licked me, and like I pet it, and it was like, and then I tried to leave, and it was like still following me. I got a video too, and it was the most precious thing ever. But they, uh, the babies will like, the, the, the mother will leave the babies for a while, and then sometimes the babies will uh, wander away. And they're not afraid of people at all. I mean, it was just like like a little goat or something, like the noise that it made and just the way that it acted. <laughs> but that, <laughs> that was just amazing. <laughs> I bet that baby deer couldn't have weighed more than, I don't know, maybe eight pounds or something. I mean, he was so small. Yeah. Oh, these are nice rapids. Wow. Hmm? Oh my gosh, yeah. You should check out that uh, middle yawk section. It gets a little wilder than this. Like, out of eight of us, four of us flipped at the beginning of the month. It goes up to, I think, class two. This is nice. I didn't expect this to be uh, here. <laughs> There's like A, B, and C and stuff too. <laughs> mm. How uh, big of rapids do you do in that canoe? I'm really just not a white water No? He's just going to see. So I've gone two plus. Two plus? Nice. Um, you know, I took it on the, the slip clinic a couple times. Oh, slippery rock? Yeah, yeah but I didn't really drink very well. <laughs> Yeah. I think I've done a couple like very easy threes. The only one I can remember in particular was on the uh, oh that creek up in Worthington, Pennsylvania, Buffalo Creek. Yeah, that was pretty neat. Oh yeah, it's super fun. But you got to get it at like a real certain time. I guess there has to just be rain or something like. Another one that's like that is the north branch of the Red Bank. I did that once or twice, and it's like a really specific conditions to get to do that. I haven't even done the Red Bank. That's on my list. Oh, I don't know if, how long it's been since I've done the regular Red Bank. It's been a while. 
I did the uh, Shenango this year. I don't know if I've done that. They had a River Watchers or some sort of thing. Okay. There was like <laughs> there was like 400 paddlers, and I was like the last one to start. You know, I was the last one to get on the last bus, and I must have passed 200 people like in this boat because they all were. You know, they had smaller boats in that, and it was just, I wasn't even trying. It was kind of funny. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Yeah. So he's got um the Pine Barrens. So he wrote a book called The Pine Barrens. Um, he wrote like a okay. He wrote like they're in Santa. Oh my gosh, that'd be pretty neat to actually see them all in one place. Cause they are uh, yeah. Wow. You got the Edward Abbey books and all that stuff too, and the John Wesley Powell and all that stuff. I have the three original ones on the Lewis and Clark. I have a copy of the reprint of Lewis and Clark scripture. Lewis and Clark? Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah. I think most of those are packed up in in boxes in Santa Fe. Oh, wow. But what I'd really like to do is pack up some bookcases and other yeah. stuff on my trailer. I have a really good trailer yeah. now. And take it out and then paint it. I already transferred some other stuff this last month. Yeah. So I'll pack up some other. I would like to take a two week trip or maybe two and a half week trip in August. That would be uh, amazing. It would be just driving out, yeah. meeting maybe as many days as you want to stand in Santa Fe until you're tired of it. Yeah. And then coming back. Yeah. I mean, heck yeah, because even when you do get the job offer, which isn't likely to happen, then it's a few weeks before you'd ever start. I mean, so yeah, it's totally a possibility. How do you keep in touch with the job offer people? What is it? How do you keep in touch well, with Well, them? either, I mean, well, phone. So with the state, if you're going to get a job, they're, they're going to call you. I mean, there'll, there'll be emails and there'll be things that follow, but... Uh, do you have a cell phone that they can call you? Yeah, on? yeah, I have um, uh, a droid, actually, so I have a very nice... Uh, Cell phone. I can get the internet, you know, as much as I want on there. Um, and then at home, actually, at home, I, I just based with my last of my previous unemployment money that kind of helped me in the process. I got a nice computer. Um, what the heck is it? It's it's a laptop, but it's like a $900 laptop. It does like really 4K graphics, and it does all kind of you know high speed stuff. I think it's like eight eight something eight gigs or whatever of ram or something like i wanted to get you know on top of things because i hate buying laptops so that'll last me a long time I, I, I yeah i bought buy a laptop about every 10 years and about half of the, the lifetime of that laptop it's useless to me it's just that i'm too cheap to buy me. another one now i have one that i bought a couple years ago about two years ago but my other one i have one and dropped it on the sidewalk oh no on the sidewalk yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm actually um I'm using I'm, I'm like maxing mine out just because of the the fact that I the video is, is so high a quality now. It's pretty amazing, yeah. Yeah. 
Have you seen the hard drives? I got $129 for like my videos, a four terabyte portable hard drive. I mean, just the, the, the computer itself has one terabyte. I don't store nothing on the computer, but the uh, the hard drives even, they're, they're so huge. And then I have a two terabyte that's filled up. But with this camera, if you do six hours of video, it fills up a 128 gig SD card. So it's easy to get into the terabytes really fast. Yeah. And just, uh, like, even our home internet, though, it was so slow. So what I was able to, I actually switched internet service providers because what it was, it was taking 11, an 11-minute 11 video was taking eight hours to upload. And so I got uh, Verizon, not Verizon, but it's uh, Comcast Blast, which is, uh, then the videos upload in 45 minutes now, oh, an 11-minute video. It's still not as fast as it could be, but it's, it's, it's workable. I can set it to upload stuff overnight, and in the morning it's there. When you say you upload videos, mm -hmm. what kind of videos are you talking about? Movies or something? Yeah, yeah, like the movies I'll make in my little, like, trips, like the adventures like this. And, uh, yeah. Just the, I mean, the amount of stuff that you can share in the creativeness. I mean, gosh, it used to be not long ago, I mean, you took your pictures, and nobody would ever see my pictures, because, you know, you print your pictures, and unless you're... <laughs> You're doing slideshows or something. I mean, now it's like you put your pictures up that you can share everything with everyone, and it's at the point where it's almost too much. It is too much. It is amazing. Yeah. It's like you really need all of that. Cardinal flowers. That's what they're red ones. They're called cardinal, cardinal flowers? flowers? Oh my gosh. I'm going to get a closer look. Yeah. The unfortunate thing is this doesn't zoom, but if you get close enough, you'll definitely see it better. A lot of times I'll bring... Whoop, let me let you go through. I'm going to take a peek at the flower. There are no flowers. He says, oh, look at that rock. Even that rock is really nice. We're going to look at the cardinal flowers here on the Yaukegeni River. We're paddling up the river. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, look at that. Aren't they pretty? Oh my. It's so bright. You know what it reminds me of is, um, if you ever see the maples in Canada, like the brightness of the red is so much brighter than the brightness of the red that we get here. It's like that. It's like just so super bright. Yeah. Yeah. Not that this is a good deal. This is a really good deal. This is a really good deal. I really got a really good deal. To be where you want to be, oh my gosh, yeah. Butterflies. Oh my gosh, it's all butterflies. Does everybody feel like you get out of here safe? Oh yeah. I am I'm not eating any lunch. I'll just drink Gatorade. I'm full. I'll get out though. Well, I'm gonna try I'll just be a little bit down on the rack. Alright.
can see that those mountains back there, it's kind of like white. The rain's coming back there. It's not far away, maybe a quarter mile. Yeah, it's going to start raining like crazy in about three minutes, two minutes. Yeah. Hear the uh, thunder? possibilities. Either I can I can gear up and stay dry or I can take all my clothes off and we'll go over here. See, that's yeah, why I didn't bother with a shirt. I'm like, well, it's just going to get wet. It makes me colder or hotter either way. We might be better off to just wait here, I would think, than to get on the water now. hypothermia in May real fast on the Canyon Man thing. It was like 50 some degrees. It started pouring down rain and I got out of my kayak and I fell twice because my legs were like, they, they didn't want to work. I mean, they, and I didn't even realize they come up on me so slow. That's the problem. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's the one other time that happened that my hands didn't work. It was kind of scary.
on the Allegheny River about six years ago and we pulled out and got under someone's deck, some random person's deck. There was like 15 people, yeah, under someone's deck. <laughs>
Yeah, there's a waterfall. Oh, a mud waterfall. Yeah, it does look like somebody spilled some coffee in the river. So, <laughs> it's still cleaner than the Mon. <laughs> this is probably the only thing that keeps the Monongahela River from being even dirtier and catching on fire. <laughs> it's like this flows into it. Did you see the turtles earlier? No, I ain't seen the turtles. Where were they? They were on the river bound to the right. You were going red hot. Oh. You saw the shiny Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the same thing that happened last time. I got ahead with someone and they're like, did you see the eagle? And the people that were behind saw an eagle. Nice. Oh, wow. This looks a lot like Ohio Pow. I can't believe it. It looks like this is far up. This is nice. Yeah. I've done Whitset to Dawson. That must be like the next section up or something, or Dawson. Whitset is one stop down from Hazelbrook. Oh, okay, that's what it was. Because I know I've done Dawson to Whitset. So that. Okay, that's just like a little more than this. Okay.
bathroom on the side of the hill, kind of like a mountain goat, and I found wild thimbleberries, but they were mostly uh, past season. I've got one good one and one that was a little bit dried out. <coughs> thimbleberries are my favorite wild berries to find. I think after that's probably choke cherries or black raspberries. <coughs> Storms coming. It's a very strange day today. It's just like so many storms coming. One after another. Looks like another one's coming, yeah. That says stupid rock right there. <laughs> right there is stupid rock. Yeah. Stand there, you get stupid. That's great. <laughs> Be getting like 12 inches of rain in one day down here today. It's nuts. It looks a little bit apocalyptic. It looks apocalyptic. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's like, is this the rapture? <laughs> <laughs> you can see those apocalyptic clouds moving across and there's crazy rain behind them. It's going to be a wild and wicked weather day. Oh my gosh, here comes the wind. It's all coming up from the south. So, in West Virginia, we don't want your weather.
a microburst. Yeah, it's like solid white, like that's probably gonna be 50 mile an hour wind. So here it comes what appears to be a microburst. Microburst, hopefully not, but intense streams of rain.
Okay, so uh, we got a flash flood developing right here on the Yakagani River. We got a creek uh, coming right through here. I don't think it's anything too violent like what happened in the Grand Canyon. Yeah, this thing, it just like flash flooded like crazy. That's nuts. You can see the waterfall uh, in the back. It is coming out into the Yakagani River. This is uh, pretty crazy. No! That's not poop, is it? No! Donald, <laughs> someone's toilet. <laughs> it's cesspool. It's a nasty color, that's for sure. It's not the same as everything else. It's kind of running out over here, too. <laughs> I wonder if this is a class one or a class two. <laughs> oh, good God. Yeah, a little more, and he probably could. I, that happened uh, on that Mahoning Allegheny trip I did a few years ago. It, must, it was like that. It stormed like that, and we were paddling up the rapids in the storm. It almost got me in the Grand Canyon was like a hundred times, well maybe not a hundred, but it was like 20 times as much and it came like a lot faster. The stuff there is so scary because it just concentrates in the, you know, from way up high and all these red ro rocks and all this water was coming. I got out just in a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I was always like, because you always hear flash flood warnings around here, but it's not the same. And when you see something like that, and you're like, oh, that's what they mean. Yeah, it was a totally different thing altogether. being just as wild as the middle yacht trip because of the rain. Yeah, it was really good. Okay, yeah, that's what I'll have to do. So when we get back to my vehicle... Alright, because I didn't bring my wallet with me because I don't want to get wet. But this is my vehicle. <laughs> yeah, whatever it takes. If this is a hundred dollar trip, I'd pay. <laughs> Even if I don't have the money, I'd pay. Uh, yeah. This is a lot more fun than yeah, most anything I've done in the past month. All the way, all the way back to July 3rd is since I had this much fun. This is a big time adventure.
<laughs> and the kayak would do a paint inspection. That would be the best. Yeah. How long have you been kayaking? I've been canoeing since I was 15 years old. Oh. That's amazing. That's exactly when I started canoeing. I was 15 years old, and then I got the kayak when I was 21. Okay. Yeah, I started in yeah, totally. When did you get a kayak? So you got it the year before I got this because I had this in 2001. When I was in high school, I was in high school from 95 to 99, all the kayaks were fiberglass. Like they were these, and they were like these. And I was doing canoeing when they only had the Grumman aluminum. The Grumman, I remember the Grummans, yeah. Like, um, the first canoe trip I did was on a Grumman on the Clarion River with my dad. that were like whitewater boats that were fiberglass that that was that were around before this like i paddled in high school a yellow boat it looked a lot like this but i think it might have been a fiberglass something like this it wasn't the, yeah they weren't the same as the high-end fiberglass you see today with the white bottoms like those are those are the, they were like 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 little bullets or something. I actually saw someone paddling one of those a few years ago. It was like, holy crap, I hadn't seen that in ages. It was from like the 60s. They were all, um, you know, they were designed, I guess, more similarly to the way the Eskimos, you know, designed the boats. I mean, with the blazes and the resins and, you know, the structures that they put in there. Um,
This flooded road. He's gonna go across there and check it for us. He's the guy that when we were checking the ice thickness, we made him stick his hand in the ice on Lake Arthur, and I got a picture of him with his hand in the ice to see if it was safe to walk. <laughs> so it's all easy.